Hi everyone, Dan here. I want to show you how you can do batch processing with On1 Resize AI inside of On1 Photo Raw. Here I've got a folder of photos that I've been working on for a gallery show. It's my ready to print folder. These are all ready to prepare to print. I've got photos of different sizes, different aspect ratios that I've taken over the years. And I want to get them ready to either print on my own or go to the lab. So let me show you how I'm going to do this. I'm just going to, while I'm inside this folder, go to Resize. Now one of the cool things about Resize AI is that I can actually view all the other photos that are in that folder and I can select multiples and I can use different settings or the same settings on multiple photos. It makes batch processing a lot easier than it used to be with the old Resize. So I'm just going to open up my film strip here. You'll see all the other photos that are in this folder. What I want to do is I want to pick all the ones that are about the same aspect ratio, make sure they're all the exact same size, and then save them out to go to the lab or print them directly. You notice that some of these photos are panoramas. I don't want to use the panoramas in this case because they're obviously a very different aspect ratio. So I'm going to go through and I'm just going to multiple select until I grab all the ones that are shot at about the same size or aspect ratio. There we go. So I'm going to grab all of those guys. The first photo that I have selected, it happens to be one that's that size. And what I want to do is I want to go through and I want to make all of these 24 by 30 inches. One of the easiest ways to get started is to use one of the built-in presets. So I'm going to send these to the photo lab. So I'll just select photo lab and I'll go down to the size of print I want to make, 24 by 30. You notice when I select a preset, the crop box turns on automatically. That's because in many cases, the photo size doesn't match the print size exactly. So this lets me go through and adjust the crop on a photo by photo basis. Now, because all these are really close to that aspect ratio right off the bat, I don't really need to do anything other than hit apply. You'll notice over here in the photo size pane, it's picked the right size, 24 by 30, the 300 resolution I need for a lab print, and in sharpening is turned on the right amount of sharpening for a regular continuous tone photographic print. I can now synchronize that setting across all the other selected photos. I'm just going to hit the sync button right here. Now watch, it's going to apply those same settings to all the other selected photos. You'll notice that their resize output size is all now the same size, 9000 by 7200 pixels, the same size and I can go from photo to photo and adjust the crop if needed. Let's say there happened to be a photo in here that didn't quite match that aspect ratio. I could go through and double check and adjust it. I happen to know that this Crater Lake shot was a little different aspect ratio. So if I select that, I go back and turn on the crop tool, I can see the center crop that it created and I can recompose my crop if necessary. I want to move it over to the right just a little bit. There we go. Now that's updated the crop on that photo. Now that I've got all the crops and all the resizing and all the settings set correctly, it's time to export those photos out. So I'll just hit the export button on the right. From here I choose how I want to name them, where I want to save them, and any other file related settings. In this case, I'm going to use the file name token, so it uses the original file name, and I'm just going to add resize to the end of the name. I'm going to store them in the same folder where the originals come from, but I could also choose any other location to put those in. When I'm done, I want it to create a zip archive of everything. It's going to take all those photos. It's going to zip them up into one file that I can send to my lab. And I want it to show me in the finder so that I can find the file easily to upload to my lab. I'm going to make these all JPEGs, 90% quality in Adobe RGB. All the resizing has been handled by Resize AI for me automatically. All the sharpening has already been done as well. And I'm going to leave all the metadata in place. If I wanted to add a watermark, I could do that right now to each photo as well. Once I have everything configured in the export dialog, I'll just hit the export button. Resize will go through, open each photo, crop it, resize it, scale it, sharpen it, everything that I've asked for. When it's done, it's going to save them all into one compressed zip file and show it to me so that I can easily upload it to my lab. All right, a few minutes has gone by. You'll notice that down in my film strip, we'll see all of the new photos that have been created with resize added to the file name. And in the finder, right here, here's the on one export, a 200 megabyte file that's taken all of those JPEGs, compressed them into a single file that I can now easily send to my lab. All right, now let's say I'm lucky enough to have a big printer. I want to print these on my own rather than create new files to send to the lab. I have those same photos selected. I'm just going to make one adjustment in order to send them to my printer. What I want to do is I want to change my resolution. These were all set to 300, which is a good general purpose resolution and is proper for continuous tone printing. But on my Epson printer, I want to go a little bit higher. I want to go to 360. I'm just going to click on these three little dots and it gives me presets that I can use for the most common printer types. 
I'm just going to pick the Epson 360 pixel per inch option. That's the only change I need to make. I'll hit the sync button again. That'll adjust the resolution across all the selected photos. Then I hit the print button and it'll bring up the print dialog. First thing I need to do is make sure I've got the right printer selected. In this case, the Epson Styles Pro 9900. And then I need to pick the right page size. You might need to hit the setup button and create a custom page size if you haven't done it already. I've already got one created for 24 by 30 borderless roll paper auto expand. You notice the resolution is already set for me. Next thing I need to do is pick the right printer output profile. So I'm just going to select the one for the paper that I'm going to print on. I'm going to print on glossy paper. I'm printing landscapes. I'm going to use the relative color metric rendering intent. I can scroll up and down the list and you can actually see what each page is going to look like with your print prepared for it. You can even go to the survey view down here at the bottom and you'll actually see each page with the print on it. It might take a second for it to generate it, but it'll let you kind of preview what each one is going to look like. Keep in mind, this is also being previewed with soft proofing automatically so that you can see what it's going to look like with your printer profile applied to it. All right. Those all look pretty good. I want to do one more thing. I actually want to add a watermark. So I'm going to go to the watermark section down here. I'm going to turn this on. I can pick any file that I've added as a watermark. I've actually got one in here called Made With On One, which is just a little On One logo. I want to put that down here in the bottom right hand corner, but I want to make it small and semi-transparent. So I'm just going to decrease the size down. I can adjust the inset. That's basically how far it goes into the photo. If I want to, I want it pretty close to the edge. And I'm going to bring the opacity down to about 50%. And maybe even a little less. Let's go more like 30%. So it's just going to put a very light little logo in the bottom corner. All right, everything is set to go. I can hit the print one button to have it print out just the first photo for me to double check. Once I've got everything set and I love it, I can hit print all and it'll print all of the photos out for me. So there you go. That's how you can use Resize AI to do batch processing and batch printing right inside of On One Photo Raw. Thanks for watching.